Rupert, I have been fascinated with your innovative thoughts about how reality is structured. It's very different. How does that relate to your beliefs about God, about a non-physical world? Do they interact? I don't see a sharp separation of of consciousness and physical reality. I'm I'm certainly not a dualist. Um, I think there's a kind of mind or consciousness at all levels of nature, um, in molecules, in atoms, in cells, in animals, uh, in the earth, in the sun, in the galaxy, and in the whole universe. And I think that this kind of mind at every level of nature, uh, when you reach the level of the entire universe, the as it were, the whole universe is the body of which the mind of the universe is the mind. To say that's non-physical, um, you know, perhaps is straining language. It's part of the way things are. The word physical comes from the Greek word physis, which means nature. And I would say that consciousness is part of nature, not separate from it. I think our thinking on these things is shaped by unfortunate divisions that happened in the 17th century in the foundations of modern science, where people had the machine analogy for the universe and for nature. The machine analogy is a very bad analogy, I think, for nature. It projects this human obsession with machinery onto the natural world. And what makes a machine different from an organism is that an organism organizes itself, a bee or a giraffe or an oak tree grows by itself. A machine is organized from outside by an external agent and organized and designed by an external intelligence. So the machine is designed by somebody and put together by people, um, and the mind of the machine is outside it. Now, in the 17th century, they said the universe is a machine, all of nature is mechanical, and there's a mind outside it, God, who is the designer of the machinery. This was very anthropocentric. Just as people design machines, God designs nature. Traditional theology never saw it that way. Um, It was a a product of a 17th and 18th century way of thinking about mechanical nature with a God outside it. That gives the division between the physical and the non-physical. It creates the idea of a God totally separate from nature, a kind of external mind that delves in now and then to design things or tinker with the machinery. Um, and that kind of God is the sort of God that most atheists reject. I'm not an atheist, but I reject that kind of God too. I think it's a totally implausible view uh, of, of God. Um, I think if we think of a consciousness embedded within nature and part of nature and part of the universe, um, the mind of the whole universe, then we get a much better view of what uh, a divine consciousness might be in this universe. That sounds like pantheism, where the universe is God in essence. Well, I think it's more than that. I would say, technically speaking, what I, in theological terms, it, I would say what I think is panentheism. Panentheism means that God is in everything, but also that everything's in God so that the whole universe is within the divine being. And if there are other universes, many physicists now proliferate universes at the merest whim, they have billions of them, Um, each of those would have its own mind. But then you could say that there might be a mind that's the mind of all these universes, which transcends an individual universe, but there could be a mind of the entire set of possible universes. Then you'd have a kind of transcendent aspect to God. So you believe in God... Yes. And the God you believe in is the God you describe as the mind that represents the totality of the universe or the multiple universes. Yes, that's one aspect of the divine. I mean, the, 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 the mind is one aspect of God. The, then there's also the kind of energy of, of that in nature. You see, if we look at the physical structure of reality, what science reveals to us is that there are two fundamental principles in nature. One is energy, which is universal. The whole universe has a universal flux of energy going through it. That energy can take innumerable forms. The principle of conservation of energy says, you know, there's always this amount of energy, can take many forms. The energy in the sun goes into a plant, you or I eat grain from the plant, it becomes energy that powers our brains and enables Mm. us to speak now, that turns into heat, and energy can take many different forms, but there's an underlying reality in nature of energy. 
The other underlying reality is fields. Fields are what organize the energy, give it forms, patterns, and structures. Um, the electromagnetic field, the gravitational field, I think morphic fields which organize the form and shape of things, the fields of nuclear physics and of atomic physics. Uh, these are the, what organize the energy. So matter is energy organized by fields. That's what physics tells us. It's not a fundamental principle. Old-style materialism thought matter was just stuff, like little billiard balls mm. that never changed. It isn't. It's vibrating patterns of activity. Now, I think that the divine nature is reflected in both those things. It's reflected both in the organizing principles of nature, the fields of nature, which you could say is mind-like, because mind is to do with organization, structure, pattern. But also... Uh, the very substance of reality, that ongoing flux which gives the life to nature, the energy of nature, I think is another aspect of the divine. Does the divine, in your idea, exceed the totality of what the universe is or what, reality, what physical reality is? Or are they, are, are they the same? Well, my own particular take on it is shaped by the fact that I'm a Christian and I see things through that lens. And the Christian view of the divine is that God is not a single, undifferentiated totality, that God has different aspects. And the two aspects, <clears throat> the idea is there's a source of all things, which could be the source or the ultimate unifying principle. But one aspect of the divine is the mind-like aspect, which in Christian theology is called the logos, which is the reason, the proportion, the mind-like ordering principle of nature. The other is the energy aspect of things, the breath of life in all things, the spirit, the Holy Spirit. So you have the idea of the, the breath, the energy, the flow of things, and the organizing principle. But those have a common source that unifies them. But in traditional Christian doctrine, God is uh, the creator of all there is, and, but is independent of it. Is not, um, is not totally uh, encompassed by it. Well, that may be the case. I mean, if God is the creator of this universe and the, the divine creative power works through both the fields of nature sure. and the Fine. energy in nature, if there are other universes, uh, then you could say God's the source of all possible universes, then that creative source of this universe and those creative aspects would be greater than this particular universe. Um, we don't know if there are other universes, but um, some physicists think there are. And if so, then there'd be a creative, you could say that there's the ultimate creator is the source of all these universes and their regulative principles, the energy and the forms. Within sure, them. but that ultimate creator, when you get to the, the superset of everything, uh, is that creator have an independence from th that which is created? Because that's the traditional Christian doctrine uh, that... Other religions have different views of that, uh, but that God is created it, but maintains an independent existence. Well, I'm not sure that it is the traditional Christian doctrine. It's one doctrine, but when you get to these ultimate questions, the fact is nobody knows, right. and you know it's purely speculative. Well, what's your speculation? Yeah. Well, I don't think we know. You see, I think when we're dealing with ultimate questions like the origin of the universe, we're limited by our own limited minds, and. I'm, uh, the, the Christian theological tradition I like most in this area is the Greek Orthodox Church has a tradition of theology called apophatic theology. That's negative theology. It yeah, says that yeah. what we can know is what we don't know about yeah. God, and what we, we just don't know um, the, the divine nature in its fullness and complexity. The, the mind behind the entire universe is so far beyond anything our lim limited minds could grasp. All we can say is what God is not. And if you come down to trying to pin it down to some formula that you can express in, in some form of limited words in English or Latin or whatever, <laughs> this is a serious human limitation. I take that view. And I think that it's pointless to speculate and get excited and dogmatic about the ultimate nature of God. What we can see is how God's reflected in this universe and in the nature we experience. How he's reflected in other universes or before the beginning of this universe is can only be entirely speculative. And um, personally, I think it's rather pointless speculating about it. The Buddhists take that view too. They say, don't bother yourself with these 
uh, you know, these questions because you can never really answer them. Concentrate on this life and this world that we find ourselves in and what we can actually do about it. The Hindus also have a view that there's these different principles in nature. They, they have an ordering principle in nature. In Tantric Hinduism, that ordering principle is Shiva, who's the divine principle that gives order to, to nature. And then they have an energy principle, Shakti, which is feminine. And that's like the ongoing power of change in nature. And these two work together. And I, I think that's similar to this Christian view uh, within this interpretation of the Holy Trinity. Yeah. I think you can find these views reflected in different religious traditions. And I think all of them are pointing towards similar kinds of insights.